Bonjour everyone, Patsoff here today for a new video in which we are going to talk about a premium tank that should have been released but it's not, aka the Emil 1951. For those of you who don't know what the Emil 1951 is, first thing first, stop living in a cave and start watching my videos. And secondly, it's basically a copy paste of the Emil 1 you're watching right now, but with a little bit less armor and an auto reloading gun. I want to remind you that the main difference between a auto loading and an auto reloading is that you can reload between shots without having to reload your whole clip on an auto reloader for example the emil one auto loader works the same way as the one you have on the 50b if you shoot two shots and you want to literally reload two shots you will have to reload your whole clip whereas for an auto reloader if you want to reload two shots you will just have to wait uh, same thing as the one we have on the projecto 65 or the Projecto 46, you wait and those shells are going to reload themselves. It's going to take a little bit more time, but at least you are not forced to reload your whole clip. And it gives you an, an amazing advantage over auto loaders, or at least in my opinion, because you can play it either like a traditional auto loader where you burst all your shells, or you can play it a little bit smartly because the less shells you shoot, the faster your reload time. That's pretty much how auto reloading mechanism works. And Wargaming, when they first released this new Swedish line, they thought, you know what, it would be a good idea to actually implement a premium version of the tier 8 the Emil 1, aka the Emil 1951. And they announced it, they told us that it was going to be really soon in terms of sold, that they were about to sell it really, really soon, and the tank never came to Blitz. Or at least it never came yet. Let me explain to you everything there is to know because I know a lot of people are asking again and again the same questions concerning this tank. Pentuf, where is the tank? I want to play it. I want to buy it. Where is it? When is it coming? I'm going to answer to everybody in a video. So I hope my DMs are not going to be filled anymore with those kind of questions. So let me jump directly into it. What you need to understand about the Emil is that it was in test a long time ago, maybe three or four months ago so it had been prepared for a very long time so you could expect the tank to actually be ready to be implemented but there is something Wargaming did not anticipate aka the statistics of the Emil 1. If you take a look at Wargaming developers statistics the best performing tank at the moment is the Emil 1 with an average win rate for all the players playing the tank of 65 percent which means that Every time someone plays the Emil, he has nearly two chances out of three to win. Why? Because the tank in its current state is completely broken. And the thing is, as the Emil 1951 has the exact same characteristics as the uh, the Emil 1951 has the exact same characteristics as the Emil 1 except for the gun which is maybe even better on the Emil 1951 due to the auto reloading mechanism Wargaming said hold on hold on the thing is we have the Emil 1 which is outperforming pretty much every single tier 8 in the game if we release the premium version everybody will jump on it and everybody will buy that tank if it's the case we are gonna break the tier 8 matchmaking so they decided not to sell it for the moment but they will they will pretty soon and let me explain to you why as you all know blitz fair is coming right around the corner and with it comes snow globes and as the tank is completely broken the emil 1951 the only way for wargaming to release the tank without destroying the whole matchmaking is making it nearly impossible to get that's why it's going to be in the snow globe offer which uh, you will have the chance to get the emil 1951 for only four percent chances just imagine, we already have the Emil 1, which is the tech tree version. Everybody's spamming that tank because it's way too broken. Just imagine if Wargaming allowed themselves to put into the shop an another completely broken version of this tank that is even better, because let's be honest, we know how Wargaming works. When they release a premium version of an already broken tank, it's gonna create nightmares. And that's why Wargaming decided to put back the Emil in crates instead of selling it directly. Because the tank was supposed to get... Uh, 
uh, to get released, if I remember correctly, the 15th of November at first, but Wargaming pulled back on their decision and decided, no, you know what, the tank is too broken, so we are not going to release it right now. Of course, if Wargaming intended to do that and therefore remove the Emil 1951 from the shop, it pretty much means that the tank should be broken. Let me explain to you what I think the reasoning of Wargaming is on this one. Because, as you all know, uh, I need to find the... the... The right effect. Oh, perfect. I like that effect. Big brain time, boys. Let me explain to you Wargaming strategy. For the moment, everybody's playing the Emil 1 because that tank is completely broken. Wargaming is going to come back on their decision and they are probably going to nerf the tank. Whereas the premium version of the Emil 1, aka the Emil 1951, is not going to change. Therefore, the Emil 1951 is going to be way broken than the Emil 1 because the Emil 1 is going to receive a nerf. This way, it's going to make the demand for the Emil 1951 go up, people will want to actually get that tank and therefore they can sell it in crates and surf on the hype for people to spend a lot of money for them to get their Emil 1951. That's pretty much how I think Wargaming is gonna organize their sellings concerning the Emil 1951. That's actually really smart because it will force kind of people to gamble in order for them to get the tank and in the same time as it decreases the number of people that are able to get the tank it's not gonna break that much the matchmaking at tier 8 uh, unlike for example the annihilator which was available to everybody for 10 bucks and as you can see it's literally destroying the tier 7 matchmaking so that's really smart for more gaming to do that because at first the tank was supposed to come in crates uh, it was 2.5% chances crates uh, in uh, you know the traditional way of 5.5 euros a crate and you had to, you had the lucky charm and if you managed to get 25 you would get the tank guaranteed and Wargaming pulled back on their decision concerning that so yeah pretty much you can expect the Emil 1951 to be what the Emil 1 is right now aka one of the most competitive tier 8 tanks the only difference between the Emil and the Emil 1951 one is that the Emil one is probably going to be nerfed really soon because if you take a look as I told you at Wargaming statistics concerning the tank it's literally outperforming every single tier 8 in the game at the moment. So I would like to know what do you think about that guys? Do you think it's a good move from Wargaming or do you think it's kind of a bitch move simply because uh, it forces people to gamble? I mean at one point Wargaming has to make a choice and they made the choice that fits better both the game and their benefits. If they force people to gamble they'll make more money because gambling uh, brings way more money than the traditional uh, buying the tank for a 50 euros bundle but at the same time as you need to gamble it's really hard for you to get the tank and therefore we are not going to see a lot of Emil 1951 on the battlefield and so it's not going to break too hard the matchmaking because even if you're against gambling I just want to remind you one thing if they released the Emil 1951 in its current state for 25 30 maybe 40 euros a lot of people would buy it and the matchmaking at tier 8 would be completely broken so I support Wargaming decision even if I'm not in favor of crates but hey sometimes you have to make choices and I would rather have an overpriced tier 8 than a broken tier 8 matchmaking. Thank you all for listening, thank you all for watching, you've been awesome and I'm gonna see you soon for a new video. Au revoir.